And when you turn the money knob up, the money knob thing on the screen goes up. And that's not how the economy works, little baby. In the United States, there are millions of unfilled jobs. There are millions of unemployed workers. But why are the unemployed workers not taking these unfilled jobs? If you listen to the prevailing political narrative, you'll think that the reason that these jobs are not being filled is that these jobs are not paying enough money. We've constantly heard about the minimum wage needing to be increased. You've seen this movement to fight for a $15 minimum wage. A $15 an hour minimum wage is what some big cities that cost a lot to live in are pushing for. So surely that means that the minimum wage in general is bad, that it needs to go up, and that the reason that workers are not going back to work is that the unemployment is paying them more than the jobs that they could be doing would pay them. Essentially, they're being paid not to work. So the argument that has developed is that these workplaces simply aren't paying enough money. Pay more money, pay your workers a living wage. Maybe the problem is that if you have a job and you're not paying enough money for someone to make a living wage off of said job, maybe you should pay more money. And maybe you don't deserve to have workers if you're not willing to pay enough money that you can beat the enhanced unemployment. But what does the enhanced unemployment cost? In North Carolina, average unemployment is $236 per week. But with the $300 per person per week enhancement to unemployment that the federal government has decided to give us, that goes up to $536 per week. Approximately $27,278 per year. If you were to add taxes back into that using a tax calculator or whatever, federal, state, local tax, plus unemployment, plus Medicare, all of these things that you pay in your paycheck, the pre-tax salary that is required to compensate an employee, and keep in mind we are talking all the way down to unskilled labor, fast food clerks and such, the salary required to match the average enhanced unemployment benefits through September 2021 at this point would be $34,118 per year. How much is that hourly? $16.40. And this is in North Carolina. This is not in Seattle, San Francisco, New York, Boston. This is not in a high cost of living place. Raleigh, Charlotte, Greensboro, places where you can get an apartment for $1,000 a month or less. Unlike San Francisco, where you're lucky if you get one for $2,500 that doesn't even have a bedroom. The minimum wage people in Seattle and San Francisco, the highest, the most expensive places to live in the entire United States, they wanted a $15 an hour minimum wage in San Francisco, where the cost of living is way more than double North Carolina. But in North Carolina, unemployment on average with the enhancement is paying $1.40 more per hour. So when you say that workers aren't being paid enough and that's why they're not going to work, when you complain on Twitter, we're not gonna work for these scummy employers that don't pay us enough money anymore. When you say that a business does not deserve to have employees if they can't compete with something as lowly as unemployment that pays $16.40 an hour to be an unskilled 18-year-old clerk at a fast food restaurant. That makes you stupid. Completely unrealistic. $16.40 an hour is pretty darn comfortable living in North Carolina. To do literally nothing. And if they're pulling any kind of side hustle that's under the table, cash only stuff, mowing lawns, God knows if they're doing some kind of work that isn't getting reported, they can stack that on top of their cushy, cushy, 2,000 something dollars a month, saying that employers can't have employees if they don't pay beyond what unemployment pays is completely ignorant of the reality. How are they supposed to pay $16.40 an hour? for a position that used to pay $9 an hour prior to this hiring freeze caused by unemployment. How do you think that a restaurant 
it, let's let's just assume there's only one clerk, one drive-through person, two people in the back cooking and packing food. Let's ignore everything else. Just four people working. And let's say those four people working were. Let's get make it generous. Let's say they were being paid ten dollars an hour. So ten to sixteen dollars an hour. That's six extra dollars per hour. Four people. So six times four is $24 an hour more that they have to pay. Now, how many hours are there in a day? Well, the McDonald's where I am operates 24 hours, but let's assume that yours doesn't. Let's say that they operate a day, mm, they make it easy to work with. Let's say they shut down for four hours a night, 20 hours, $24 an hour times 20 hours a day. We're already getting into several thousand dollars extra a week. Margins in any kind of food or grocery industry are already not very high. So the net effect of this would be if that is the only way that these fast food places can find workers, they're just going to shut down and you won't have access to that anymore. This is like when the uh, some of the bigger, you know, more, more blue, authoritarian leftist areas decided that it would be a great idea to force grocery stores to pay hero pay. And the grocery stores had to cut a bunch of stores because they can't pay it. So they shut the stores down rather than bleed money for the government's sake. All those heroes ended up unemployed and the areas that had poorly performing stores, guess what happened? Now they have no grocery store. It's kind of like how in Minneapolis, all those riots destroyed so many of the stores around that the economy, where do you go when you need to get something? Where do you go to get groceries? Where do you go to get, you know, car oil? Where do you go to get these things? Well, everybody decided it was a great idea to trash the place. When you run off businesses like this, when you just say, I don't care, you're a rich piece of shit. I don't care about you because you don't care about me because somehow I've gotten the notion that business should care about its workers to the point that they get personally involved and they pay workers based on the workers' needs rather than the business's capability. You know what, if it's not a good fit, you don't have to work there. And I get it. I get that you don't want to work there because the unemployment pays more. It's a sound financial decision if you're getting paid 12 an hour and unemployment's paying you 16, 40 an hour pre-tax. It makes sense. I get it. But saying that businesses should not have employees if they can't beat unemployment makes no sense when unemployment is more than doubled in some places. When unemployment is paying wages that are on par with an entry level tech job that requires a degree, that requires training, this doesn't make any sense. And what you're doing when you say we don't care about businesses, the business has no reason to then care about you either. When you say you don't care about the needs of a business, when you say that the business's expenses don't matter, the businesses should just pay more money, end of story. Well, guess what, dingbat? The economy is not a little machine where there's one little knob and there's one little screen. And when you turn the money knob up, the money knob thing on the screen goes up. That's not how the economy works, little baby. That's not how it works. You don't you turn the money knob up and get more money. No, what happens is you turn the money knob up and then it has cascading effects throughout the entire system, both short and long term, both personal and industrial. You have effects that don't work linearly. There are things that happen over time, such as rate increases. There are other things that happen fairly quickly. If all of a sudden you go from needing to pay 10 an hour to 16 an hour, you probably are closing your business down because that kind of massive spike in expenses is not something that most businesses can handle and continue to off it, off, off, operate, Jesus Christ, in a m remotely profitable manner. And all businesses exist to make a profit, even so-called non-profits, let's just be honest, despite being called a non-profit, all businesses operate around growth and gain. That's how business works. You cannot deny the reality of business. You can't pretend that businesses could probably pay their workers $16 an hour to do work that they're paying $10 an hour for because they're a bunch of rich bastards and they're just greedy and that's all there is to it. They have plenty of money. No, that's not how it works. When you say turn up money knob, McDonald's and Target, Kroger, whatever, all the grocery stores, they shut down and leave your area because it's not profitable. There's nothing in it for them at that point. 
businesses are still run by people and they don't open these things just out of the goodness of their heart. They open them to make money. The hope is that the business offers a thing that someone else needs and then that someone else gives the business money so the business gets money and the person gets something they need. Both parties benefit from this exchange. When you tilt it to the point that the business is basically just a payroll machine and rather than making money, they're bleeding the owners dry, what's the point of the owners continuing to run that business at all? You might think it's a great idea to mandate these higher wages. You might think it's a great idea to say, well, if you can't pay unemployment you know, as a regular wage, then you're a crap business that doesn't deserve workers. But you can't stop them from going out of business and that's the flip side of this you can't stop them from quitting the one right that people have that nobody else can do anything to stop is the right to not associate the right to not participate the right to walk away the right to say no thank you please take your money elsewhere I'm done in fact, this has been tested in court. There was a business that unionized, or rather the workers voted to unionize. After the workers voted to unionize, the entire company completely shut down and closed its doors for good. The workers took the company to court and sued them because the workers voting to unionize, they said, was why the company shut down. You have to stop this company. You can't allow them to shut down because they shut down solely for the purpose of breaking up a union. They said, now wait a minute, you voted to unionize the workforce and you say they shut down because you voted to unionize the workforce. So presumably, but what they're doing is completely shutting down the business and closing the doors. They're losing 100% of everything. The business will be gone. The assets will probably have to be liquidated. They have what property they have, but they are making nothing. They've closed up their doors, they're gone. They don't stand to benefit from shutting down. So you can't make them open back up. They have the right to close the doors completely and walk away. Now the courts did say that if they only shut down one branch that voted to unionize, maybe that would be different. But this was a complete closure. This was walking away. You have the right to walk away you have the right to dissociate, to give up, to go away, to stop doing things. And because that right exists, because you can just not participate, these people that think that it's okay to tell you what you can and cannot do, that think that it's okay to tell a business what they have to pay, you can just walk away. And that's the one thing they can't stop you from doing. So when they turn the money knob up, you can close your doors. You can stop. You can leave. And that's exactly what I encourage you to do. And when the unemployment assistance ends, I think that all those people who came to you with job applications, who you said, yes, we'll hire you, and they walked away because they just did it to get their unemployment renewed, I think you blacklist them and never hire them. There's no reason that you have to let them work for you. You have every right to not hire those people because you know what they did. You know what they're doing. They're saying this to you. They don't care about you. You, therefore, don't have to care about them. It is, in the end, just business. So think this through. To say the business has to compete with unemployment is stupid. And why should the business then take the people that were so quick to shun the business whenever the unemployment reward was dangling in front of them, whenever that carrot was on that stick for a few more months? And then they come crawling back around begging for employment whenever the big bad gravy train stops flowing. Toughen up, buttercup. You want to suck off the government teat? You want to do that? You want to live that way? That's fine, but that also means we don't have to hire you. This is sort of a warning that there may be a backlash. There may be at these businesses an unspoken practice to discriminate against those who decided to fill out a job application, get a job offer, and then just walk away from the job offer to renew their unemployment because I know you have to do that. If you have two resumes in front of you, if you have two job applications, and one of them matches a prior job application that you offered a job and they walked away and you know it's because of unemployment, and you have another one that doesn't match that, which one do you think the company's going to hire? Which one do you think is going to win that fight? That'll be your parting thought. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what a horrible person I am in the comments. 
Uh, this wasn't the best worded video ever, but uh, I'm sure that I'll get a bunch of stupid comments about it. There's always some socialist idiot that has something to say, so feel free to go down there, be a socialist idiot, and say your piece. Jody Bruchon, signing out. Take care. Have a good one. I think I've already said that. Bye! <laughs>